Hello everyone, welcome back to another OSTEM hackathon training video. My name's Sage, my pronouns are she, they, and in this video we're just going to be covering the backend functions, and these functions are going to be responsible for actually going into our database and performing operations. And right now we're not even going to touch front end. And after this part of the course, we're going to actually go in and connect the back end to the front end. But right now we're doing each thing individually. So in the back end, we're just going to be focusing on functions and getting and doing stuff from the database. Okay, so before we start, I just want you all to install some packages we're going to need eventually. So you're going to go to your back end and you're going to open up a git bash just like that. And then you're going to do some of these npm installs. So first you're going to do npm install cores just like that. And then you're going to do npm install decrypt just like that. That will be used for our passwords. And then you're going to do npm install multer. And then after that, you should have all the necessary dependencies we need to start developing. Just like that. And then after that, you should be good on npm install stuff. Okay, so we're going to actually start making those functions now. Uh, so first things first is let's go to our repository very quick. So I already copy pasted everything we need in just because if I like type on this video and retype everything, that's going to take a lot of time. So I just copy pasted everything we need and I'm just going to walk you all through it. So feel free to pause the video if you get stuck and make sure you understand each part in detail. And so first things first is you're going to go to your back end. And right now you should have this, just have this models folder where we created these files in the last video. And then you're going to create a new file called source, a new folder. And within this folder, you're going to create four files, auth.js, categories.js, post.js, and users.js. We're going to start with auth.js, so you don't have to worry about these three yet. So create this file, auth.js, and then open it up in Visual Studio. And you're going to also want to open up your index.js. So let me get this opened up. Right now, ignore all of this. We'll get to that in a bit. Right now, what's important is you adding this part here. So const auth require source auth. So these two don't do that yet. Only do this line. So once you do that, you're going to go down to at and you're going to create app.use auth auth just like that. So you what you want to add is this line right now and then this line. Everything else you don't need to touch right now. So you just need to add two lines. So basically by adding those two lines, you're letting index.js know that this file here exists and there's functions in it we could use. So first things first, you're going to want to import express router and you're going to want to we're going to want to use the user schema for this cuz this is going to be responsible for creating accounts and all that good stuff or posting our login so install the uh or require the model schema and then you're going to also get the bcrypt module we already did npm install for. So if you don't have bcrypt yet, please do npm install bcrypt in your terminal. This is responsible for hashing our passwords. So we're not sending passwords all over the place in plain text for everyone to see. So please also install bcrypt. So the first function we're going to be creating is the post function. Now this is actually going to create data in our database. So you're just going to want to do router.post create function and this is going to be asynchronous and this is going to be the request and then the response. So essentially when the user tries to create an account, they put their password, they put their email and their username and then they send a request to the server and then the server handles it and this is the function within the server. So the server then creates a new user in the database based on that request and then sends a response back saying, 
hey, I was able to create this user, or hey, I wasn't able to create this user. So, to do that, we're going to first have this try catch. This is going to catch for any errors we have in creating the user. And first things first is we're going to salt the password. So, essentially, you're going to have a request body. And that request body is going to have everything that was in the user schema. So, let me open up the user schema just so you could see what that looks like. So, basically, in the request body, we're going to have username, email, password, and we're not going to have profile pic yet um, because you'll do that later in settings. But they'll pass in a request body that looks very similar to this format. And it's going to have username, email, and password. So you're going to go salt the password they passed in first. So you're going to do request.body and then salt and bcrypt.hash. This basically encrypts the password they sent in. And you're going to put that encrypted password in the database. If you don't do this, then all the passwords will be plain and open if someone hacked into the database. And that is not good. And then you're going to do const new user. And you're going to create a new user. So again, this represents the user schema that we required up here. And you're going to have the username be what they put in the request body. And the email be what they put in the request body. And the password is going to be the hashed password. It's not going to be the plain text they put in the request body. So make sure you do that. And then you're going to do new user dot save just like this. And that's going to save it to the database when you post it. And we're going to send a status response of 200 saying, oh, look, you created the user and nothing went wrong. And if not, if some at some point there's an error in this, let's say that the a user already exists. Because again, remember in our schema, we had it so username had to be unique. Email has to be unique. So if those, for example, if those requirements aren't met, like there's already a user under that username in the database, that will result in an error. And then we'll have to spend, the server will have to send a response back saying, hey, you can't create that user. So here's a error status code of 500. So that's essentially how creating the account works. So in the next step is we're going to actually have to test this. So things might come together more as you test this. So if you go to your database now that you made the create account post, you go to browse collections, you'll see these new um, lists. So right now these two you won't have because you this is this stuff is going to be implemented later. It's just remember I copy pasted everything I'm covering in this video already. So right now you would go to the users list and you should have a post. This is the post we just posted. This is an additional one I already had. So suppose we want to post a new user to just add two after all of them to make it unique. It will send over to the database and then when you refresh the page, it should have the new user. So our create account post endpoint works. So the next part we would need a code after that is the login endpoint. So this is used for creating an account and we need something to be used for logging in. So what this means is now we have our create account where users will put in new information, it will create a new document. The login page will just simply take the username, find it within the users list in our database, and try to see if the password is the same. If the password is the same, we could log in. If it's not the same, we can't, and we clearly can't log in. So to implement that, you're going to go over to your auth.js, and right under your create account, you're going to do a new router.post, and just going to be router.post login. And it's going to take in request and response. So what we're going to do is we're going to first go through the entire list within our database. So it's going to go through this. And it's going to find the user. So suppose new user is logging in. It will go through this list and it will find new user. And then it will take this. And if it can't find a user, that user doesn't exist. So we just will return 
uh, error status code saying that user doesn't exist or no user, just like that. And then we're going to then validate the login. And by doing that, we're going to have to compare the password. So we're going to compare the password they enter within the request body to the actual user password. And we're going to do bcrypt.compare to do that because remember the password in the database is hashed. So do that. And then this validated variable will hold true or false if it's validated. So suppose it is not validated, then we're going to send an error response saying that you input the wrong password and you can't get into that account. And However, if it is the correct password, we're going to continue and we're going to send a response saying that we're now logged into that account. And if, in, if any errors happen up here, we're going to catch them here and send an error response, error code 500, just like that. And then we're going to do const password others user doc. So basically, when we log in, it's going to send the actual user data to the front end. So we could like manipulate that and do stuff. So you should implement this endpoint. Please ask me questions through personal DM if you are confused on any of this, because this is a lot to digest. But essentially what this does, it just logs a user in. So now we have to test this. So to test this, you're going to go to Postman and then you're going to put in this path. So you're going to do localhost 3001 auth and then instead of create account, you're going to do log in at the end. And in your body, you, we're going to try to first log in as a user that we know exists and we know the password for. So we're going to click send and it returns that user's data. So that means we're logged in and we can see that we're logged in there. Now. We're going to try to do the same exact thing for a user that doesn't exist or we get the password wrong. So let's try to log in for a new user if the password is wrong, just like that. And it sends incorrect password and we get a bunch of errors. So it works properly. <laughs> so incorrect password, clearly we don't have the correct password and we get some errors. So let's now try a user that doesn't exist so let's just put hi all clearly hi as username is not in our database so let's just send that see what happens and then we'll say no user and give us errors here so that means we're done with our auth.js and it all works so also while you're doing this please commit your stuff in order so like once you created this you should create a commit git commit to save this code in your version control reference the first couple videos I talked about that and after that you should be good with auth.js so now you could log in and create an account through the back end okay so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna work on your users.js and what this is gonna do it's basically gonna get particular users from our database and return them as objects so we could pass them into the front end and do stuff with them like display user information on the screen and we're also going to also implement endpoints that update user information. So suppose the user goes to the settings page, they'll be able to update their password and all that good stuff in the database. So first things first, you go create users.js and go to it. And in your index.js, you're going to want to add this, require source users, and you're going to want to do the same thing. You're going to want to create the path for users. So you need these two lines. So app.use users users and this one. And after that, you should be able to run whatever you put in here. So first things first is you're going to want to require bcrypt, all that good stuff again. So let's start with the easiest endpoint first, getting a single user by their unique ID. So in MongoDB, you may have noticed that every time we post user, it automatically creates this underscore ID attribute and these IDs are unique to each user and that is important for getting a particular user so this endpoint is simply going to get a particular user based on their ID so to do that we're gonna have our try catch just in case errors happen 
And within here, we're going to do user.findbyid, and we're going to take the ID we passed in in the request body, and it's going to find a user by that ID if that user with that ID exists. And then it's going to send back the in our response status 200 is going to send that user data to us. And this is important. So basically on the front end, we want to be able to get unique users from the database whenever we want. So we could display stuff on the screen like their current password or username and all that good stuff. So that is perfect. And we're going to test this now. So to test this, you're going to go to your postman and you're going to do users slash and we're going to put in a unique ID we want to get. So let's try to get new user two. So copy paste this to test it. Copy paste just like that. And you don't need a request body. This doesn't matter. And we're going to change this to get. Because as you can see, this is a get function. And what this should do is it should get a particular user. So hold on right now. I need to run. Always remember to do npm start on your backend before testing every anything. So I'm going to send a get. And then it will get that user. And we could tell it worked because what it returned was that particular user and in the associated ID. Now suppose we enter some jargon. Clearly this jargon, this there's no ID that is this. So let's try to send it for invalid ID. Um, it will just give us errors or let me do a more like something that's more likely to exist of that link. Uh, send Okay, so clearly no users exist with this ID. So nothing is returned. And we should get an error. Or if we go like this, more jargon, we can get errors. And now that works. So obviously we could get a user by their unique ID now. Next thing is we're going to want to be able to delete a particular account in the database. So suppose a user was using their account and then one day they were like, I don't want this account anymore. I want to delete it. That would mean that we would need a delete account endpoint. And this delete account, you do router.delete and then the unique ID of the user in the database you want to delete. So you want to first check if the request body user ID equals the param ID. So in the request body, we're going to actually send in the user ID of who you want to delete. And we're just going to verify that the request params is that. And then you're going to do a try catch just to check for errors. And you're going to find that user by the ID. And you're going to do another try catch. And you're going to do delete many. And you're going to delete every single user under that unique username. Because remember, usernames are unique. So, sorry, you're going to delete posts under that username. So, this just finds one user and deletes it. And this deletes all the posts made by that user. So, if you delete account, you also want all your posts to be deleted, obviously. So, this deletes all the posts that have that author. And then this deletes that certain user. And then it says, returns a um, successful status code saying the user was deleted. And if the user wasn't found, we'd return these other errors. And if the there's an error, it will return can't delete user. So now we're going to test that. So you're going to change this and you're going to change it to delete. And let's, let's go to our database and find one person we want to delete. Let's say we want to delete new user too. Just like that. Make sure npm start is running. You're going to send that. So it's going to say can't delete user. That is because remember in our request body, we want to actually include some information in here. So user ID, just like that. 
And it should delete the user now. Um, looks like we didn't delete the user yet. So let's see what the error was. Okay, so I fixed the error. So basically what we had there where it was just checking like, let me just go back and this part here, we do not need that. You can delete that. Just like that. And this, you could keep it or right now I'm just going to comment it out because it's not relevant right now since we don't have any posts. But once we create the post stuff and have posts in our database, you're going to want to add this back. So when you do that, if you run it like what I just did, you should see that there's only two objects now. So sorry about that error. And yeah, you should now be good. And if we try to delete that again, hopefully that will work. And as you can see, we could delete users now. So we're all good on that end. So the next thing we need is we need to be able to update user details. So this is going to be relevant to our settings page because what if some user doesn't like their password anymore and wants to change it? So to do that, we're going to do the router.put function, just like that, that also takes in a unique user ID. And within that, this, we don't, it's not really relevant. So we could just delete that. You can also keep it if you want, I assume. Um, so let me just walk you through this. And then if there, if we're updating the password, like there's a password in the response, then we're going to bcrypt that password and hash it. And then we're going to try to update that user password by setting the, the body to the request body. So find by ID and update. So we take the ID of that particular user, find it, and then we um, set everything in the body to the request body. So in that way, we could update username and password and email. And then once that is done, we'll return a success response and send over the JSON of the updated user data and all that good stuff. And now we will go on to test it. Okay, so before we actually update, we're just gonna delete this temporarily for now. And we're gonna delete this here, just like that. And then this part, make sure this is like a low number, like five. Now we could get on to testing. So to test it, you're going to put in the user ID of the thing you want to change and then some information to update it to. You're going to send in your request and you see that it returns a new updated object. And we're going to go check that in our remote now to see if everything is nice. As you can see, things updated and we're all good now. So that means we're done with our users.js now. And sorry if I had a little bit of difficulty there, there's just some code that wasn't good anymore. Also, before we move on, we're, I fixed like an issue they were having. So it is actually important you have these if statements because it verifies that only that particular user can make updates to their account. So you're going to want to add this if statement back in. Make sure gen salt has exactly five. And then you're going to want to uh, add back in this else, just like that. And then for delete, you're going to want to do the same thing. So let me just add that back there. Make sure this is five. Now for delete, you would want to first see if the request matches the body. Otherwise, you can't like delete someone else's account. And you could comment this out now. And now when you test your put in up your update, your put here, you should pass in this user ID just to verify this equals this. And then that's how you know that that particular user is trying to um, update their account so that no other like random user could update someone else's account. So let's just quickly run delete and see what happens. Delete, send. And after deleting, we should have zero data in that collection now. So everything works now. 
So for the next endpoints, we're going to implement the categories endpoints. And now I'm not going to test these in this video. I'm going to leave that up for you to test because these functions are very, very simple. But you should still definitely pause this video and test them after we implement them. So as always, create a categories.js file within the, let's find it, within your backend source folder. So you're going to have, right now you're going to have um, auth, users, and categories. And you're going to create this new categories.js. And within that, you're going to first have these like import type things and in your index.js you're gonna now add this here const categories and then require categories just like that and down here you're gonna actually make a path for that and you're gonna do app.use categories categories just like that and then you should be good to test it now once you make those functions so the first function we need to make is we need the ability to post a new category to the database and to do this, we need this simple function here. This is very simple, sim, um, similar to the create account function we made, except there's not as much you need to like upload to the database because remember from our schema that a category just has a name attribute. So to do that, you're going to do post slash. So that means if you go to your postman, how you're going to test this is you're going to go here and you're going to change all this to categories just like that and you're gonna make it a post so make sure it matches the function so this will like post a new category basically and I'm gonna leave that up for you to go test and you would put in the uh, category name and always if you're like confused what you should put in the request body always go to your schemas and go see what is going on in your schema so you would just do like name in the request body here and then input like a string with a name in it and then you could test this function here so all this function is doing is it's getting whatever was in the request body making a new category data model and posting that to our database and then giving us a good like it worked code or an error code and then the next function is the get category so this just gets all of the categories in our database because eventually we're going to list all the categories on our sidebar so that when you click them, you can organize posts by category. So to do that, you're just going to do category.find and then in your success response, you're going to send over a list of categories and this list of categories will be displayed in the front end once we merge the front end and back end and like add the links between the two. So you could test this on your own. To test it, you would just honestly, you just do get and then send. And then it will respond with all the categories you've made in the database. So after that, you should be good with categories.js now. So now that we're good with categories.js, we're going to next move on to our very last one, which is post.js. So you're going to go to backend source and you're uh, create a new file called post.js and now that you've created this you're going to go to your index.js and you're going to grab that by doing this this line here I highlighted and you're going to use that so you're going to create a new path for posting endpoints just like that so this line and this line and then you should be perfect and you're going to um, add some like requirements up here. So we're going to want to be able to use the post schema and the user schema and express, of course. So let's let's like first start from the first one, just creating a post in the database that basically you could just copy your categories post and like change the names around. So all we're doing here is we're creating a new post from the request body and saving that into our database. And to if you don't know what how um, the, the post body of data should look like, you could always go back to your schema and observe it here. So it will have a title, photo, description, categories, and username, just like that. And so now if you test this, you're going to want to input into your request body 
this type of format to test the post. Okay, so now we're gonna wanna test that post endpoint. So to do that, you're gonna add in your request body. So that's gonna be title, photo, eventually we're gonna have like paths to photos, um, like for a specific post, and you're gonna have a description, and then a categories list. Right now, I'm just doing an empty categories list for sake of simplicity, because we're just testing. And then you're gonna have a username, and that's gonna be the author of that particular post or article. So just like this in your request body, you're gonna do post, and then you're gonna do location 3001 slash post, and you're gonna do send. And then in here, it should now create a new post in your database. So right now, I already did post one time, so I have like two since I clicked that no, the post thing twice. Um, but now that function works, you could upload posts now. So we're all good on that. Now let's um, do a new function. So the next endpoint we're going to do is a put command, and this is simply just going to update a post. So it's going to update a post by ID. So it's going to find a post in our database and update information in it. It's very similar to our update um, function for user. So you're going to first take in, you're going to take in the ID of the post and you're going to find it in your database. And once you find it, you're going to see if the post's username it's stored is equal to the request body's username. This just makes sure that only people who own that post and who are the author to the post can edit it. So this is important. So what that means is when we're going to test this, let me just set the testing stuff up now. So you're going to want to do a put posts and then by ID. So let's go to our database. Let's, let's update this one. And we're going to pass that in like this. And we're going to have username be new user like assume new user is logged in and trying to update a post that they own and that post is this one and we know they own it because it says the username of that post is new user or the author of that post is new user so it's gonna go in find that post check if the if that particular user who's trying to edit the post actually owns that post and then it's going to update the post accordingly based on what we put in the request body. Um, and it's going to find by ID and update. So it will find that particular post by ID and then update it. And then if that all works, we're going to send a success response, uh, sending to the front end the updated post. And if not, we'll have like errors and more errors. If like you, some other user tried to edit the post when they don't have those permissions they don't own the post and yeah so now let's test this endpoint so go to postman and first we're gonna pass in the username just to like verify that that user owns that post and we're gonna let's change the title now you can change everything of the post if you want but let's change the title to changed very simple just like that and we're gonna click send now we could see down here that in fact the title did change but now let's look at our remote database and see if those changes occurred so we just changed the title so now we look at this object id that we are trying to change and we see that the title has changed to changed and it's no longer ostem so we're all good now for that function so we've made our post we can now post new posts. We can now edit a particular post, but we also want to be able to delete a post. Like let's say a user doesn't want that post anymore. So we're going to do delete by post by ID. So to do that, it's very similar to deleting a user, that endpoint we implemented. So you're just going to go in, you're going to find the post by the particular ID, and you're going to make sure that user owns the post, just like we did up here with the update. And then you're just going to do post.delete and delete that post and do error, error handling accordingly. So now let's test that endpoint. So you're going to go here and you're going to do delete instead. And let's delete 
let's delete this one. The one with the title OSTEM, the additional one I, I already had. Or actually, let's just do this one, the one I changed. So let's delete this guy. Let's paste that there. Make sure this is delete so it matches the, the thing accordingly. And in our body, make sure that the username is new user so we know that user actually owns that post and can delete it and we're going to click send. Now it should delete from the database. So as you can see now we only have one thing in the database meaning the other thing got deleted so we're all good. So our delete endpoint works. Now we just need two more endpoints. So we need the get post by ID. This one is really simple. All it does is it finds a post by ID in the database. So right now we only have one thing in the database. Let's just like add a few more things. So let's like quickly go over here and make some more posts with some information. So let's go back to our post call here go to our body let's just like make a bunch of a bunch of things so let's just like post some stuff with just some junk data or something okay so after making all those posts now we have like a bunch of posts in our database to actually like work with when testing these other things so right now I just I just spammed and like uploaded five to our database so now let's start with get post ID. So this just gets a particular post by its ID. So now that we have like even more data, let's say we want to get this one. Uh, let's see. Let's say from all of these, we want to get this one here or actually this one, but even better because it's in the middle. We're going to copy that ID to test it and we're going to go here and we're going to go create a get and you're gonna do slash you're gonna get it by this particular ID and you're gonna click send now it should return that exact thing we wanted based on its ID so we could just go verify this is what we wanted title is right username is right we got the right thing and there's only one that was returned because we we're only getting trying to get one particular post and this is important because on our front end when you click on like a thumbnail of a post you just want to get data for that post you don't want data for every single post for one unique post page so after that we're done with that and then we're gonna now want to try to get all posts this is important for the home page where we're listing every single post in our database so to do that you're gonna do get and we're just gonna instead of having this ID thing here we're just gonna have a slash so we're just gonna get everything um so we're gonna also have some like little variables too um to like filter things out so eventually since we're gonna have categories we're gonna filter all the posts by categories and filter all the posts by particular user now what that means is if you like try to get something Suppose you just do posts. You're, let's just like get all posts. Once you implement this function, you should get all posts. But suppose you only want a, it from a particular user. So let's say we just want username equals new user. Like that. It'll only get things by that particular user. Now, let's see. What is it? Oh, yeah. So this you just want it to be user equals new user. So now all you can, as you can see, only new user things are uploaded. You could do the same thing for categories, but right now all my test data doesn't have categories. So you could do like category equals music, for example, and it'll return everything that is in music. And these are basically just querying and filtering out certain posts based on attributes. So like the user or the specific category. So that's kind of how these two things work and after that we're gonna basically get all posts based on 
that username. If they specified they wanted it by a all the posts by a specific user, you'll get all the posts by that specific username. Or if they specified a specific category, you'll get all posts by that category. And if none of these were specified, we're just going to get all of the posts. And then handle error stuff accordingly. So once you make this function here, you should be able to go to postman, do a get. Um, let's just delete this for now. If you do get slash posts, you should get all the posts. So right now, as you know, I have five things in the post database. So this gets all those five things. However, let's say we only want to filter out ones by a particular user. Right now, there's only four things by that particular user. Or even better, let's just let's just try to get stuff by this user. This user has only one type of post. So if you send here, it will only send the post that that user has. So that's how querying works. And after that, we should now have all the endpoints we need for the backend. However, there is one more thing we need to add. So it's just we need to change some things in index.js. So first of all, make sure you have all these requires, all this good stuff here. And also make sure you have multer. And this is going to help us like get, you later on get like images and put them on like posts from the front end. So basically a user is going to be able to make a post and the user is going to be able to get an image they want in that post and upload it. And the database is going to basically store that image related to that particular post. So to do that, you're going to have to install this library, which we already installed in the beginning. You need this path here. And then after that, you need all this, make sure you have everything here. And then you're going to do app.use slash images. So what you're going to want to do is you're basically going to want to go to your back end. You're just going to create a new folder and you're going to name it images. Just like that. And it's going to use that. And that's where all of our stuff that users post like post images is going to be stored. So next thing is you are, you should already have this part. We're going to actually initialize that storage. So to do that, you just put in this code very quick. So it just goes and it initializes that images folder as storage for post images. And then you're going to initialize an upload function in this upload function. It's going to be a post upload. And it's going to take in a single file and it's going to upload it to that images folder in our repo. And that's how we're going to store particular images that people upload for a particular post to the repo. So add this and then you should be good. So once you add all that, we're done. Basically we're hundred percent done with our backend and yeah. And then we're all good and you could, figure out how to test this if you want. Um, it's not really going to be relevant for the next few videos, but you could test this if you want by doing a post to this particular path. So like localhost slash upload, and then figure out how to upload a particular file in Postman and see if that particular file gets uploaded to the images folder you created. And that's how you know this will, this all works. But right now we're not going to touch that for a while. You could go do that on your own time if you want more knowledge. But after that, we're basically done with our entire backend. So just to recap in a little summary, what we worked on is in the last video, we created these schemas, category, post, and user. And, and then, um, yeah, let me just make these bigger. So we worked on categories, post, and user schema. And then we made an images folder. We made a source folder with these files here, auth categories, posts, and users. And these contain all of our endpoints we need for our backend. So all of our get, post, input, and delete functions for our backend are in here. And we're going to reference these in the front end when we want to manipulate stuff in the database.
And then after that, we created our .env, which has login connect information to get into our database. We did that in the last video and our index.js, which is our main file. So after that, we should be 100% done with the backend. So anyways, thank you for watching this video. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. And in the next few videos, we're going to be basically combining the front end and back end to make a fully functioning web app. And that's when things are going to get interesting because we're going to actually make our web application work and it's going to be 100% done. So please ask me questions if you got confused anywhere in this video. I know back end is a lot to digest. And anyways, thank you all for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next.